Beto, I know you love your Sam Raimi Spider-Man 2. <laughs> I sure did. But is this movie better than that classic in your eyes? Than that classic Spider-Man 2? Yes. Which is one of the best superhero movies of all time? Is this wow, one? <laughs> it, 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 I think it is. But does this one? Does is this that your one? question? Yes. Does, does this, this one surpass one? it? Spider-Man No Way Home. Well, I guess you all have to stick around and find out. That was a masterpiece. I mean, I'm going to give it five yeah, reels for boredom. sure. What? <laughs> <laughs> Here we have Spider-Man No Way Home, the highly anticipated third movie in the Tom Holland trilogy. Let's right. call it Tom Holland or trilogy the John or Watts. the John Watts trilogy, right. <laughs> right? And so, of course, there's there's been so much hype about this movie, so many theories, so many rumors about this. The one thing that I will tell you, because we're going to try to keep this as non-spoiler as possible, is that you are in for a treat. Yes, a five real <laughs> treat. I'm going straight to my real rating. It is a five real treat. Now that we have that over with, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Talk let's to him about let's this. Talk movie, about though. this. Okay, so basically, you know, I we'll, we'll start with the plot here really quick. The world now knows who Spider-Man is. Peter Parker is having a hard time dealing with this. His friends and his family are also having a hard time navigating right. the world, knowing his identity. Right, and he's very disappointed. Right. Uh, with, with how the people that he loves are being affected by this. Exactly. So then he goes ahead and whip slings over to Dr. Um, Estrange. To Dr. Estrange. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, he's like, Dr. Strange, can you like reverse time? Can you do yeah. some something, something here to like, you know, pretend like this never happened. And yeah. so that, you yeah. know, the world doesn't know who I am. And this is what sets the story in motion. I don't really want to expand any more on that. Obviously, you know from the trailers that a portal to uh, another to alternate universe is the multiverse. Dimensions or the multiverse is open, access, bringing yeah. back, uh, you know, Doc Ock, for example, Green Goblin, and Sandman, the Lizard, of course, Electro, of course. and everyone and who played so them. This is uh, probably the best Spider Man movie. I and thought it's about not even it. Close. I thought about <laughs> it for a while because I really, really love Spider Man 2, the Sam Raimi pick, but I think that this movie really outdoes itself. Um, it's not a perfect movie. It definitely takes some shortcuts that I think are a little convenient. It might be a little bit overlong, maybe a no. tad overstuffed, maybe. No. <laughs> but those are minute flaws compared to the immense satisfaction that you're going to feel in so many different ways. This movie has humor. This movie has heart. This movie has a strong ethical dilemma in the center of it. And one of the things that I was worried about going into this movie is the way in which they would integrate all of these multiverse villains from the previous Spider-Man movies into, you know, from the Mark Webb and the Sam Raimi movies, ones, yeah. how they would make use of these villains in right. this movie. And I am happy to report that the villains are integral and essential to the theme of, well, the theme in this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, the the yeah. Spider-Man theme. Da, 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 da. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm the just the funny, message yeah. of this movie, For which sure. is which you know centers around the idea of you know uh, giving people a second chance, redemption, For redemption, sure. yeah. um, and kind of finding ways to you know make up for the things that you've done, right. like you said. So. And, and, and that's you know that's one of the differences of this Spider-Man movie. You know, mm -hmm. uh, everyone, not everyone, but there are many people who complain about s superhero movies being you know cookie cutter movies, but uh, this one yeah. definitely it takes a different turn. You were mentioning how this is a different movie. Um, I would say that this is easily the darkest Spider-Man movie, which is good. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, granted, there is some laugh out loud humor for sure, but the darkness in here really, really brings out his character. You know, uh, which, which, by the way, um, uh, Peter Parker has never been explored uh, to this depth before. I feel there's a multifaceted right. exploration of his character and. And Tom Holland, mm -hmm. this is probably his best performance as Spider-Man. Yeah, no, for, absolutely, absolutely, for sure. Um, one one thing that they do in this movie is they do tremendous fan service, and 
and they, oh, yeah. and they tap into your yeah. nostalgia. This movie, more than any other Spider-Man movie, really takes its time to develop the characters, you know, well, to develop Peter Parker and his relationships. And that is a testament to the talent of Chris McKenna and Eric Summers, who have had a hand in doing some of the other, I guess, home trilogy uh, movies with John Watts as screenwriters. But this one was just them two. And they, you know, they're, they're big Spider-Man fans. And, right. you know, they continue to explore this, you know, this, this dilemma that Spider-Man has as far as like, I want to help everyone and I want to be your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But at the same time, he is endangering the ones he loves. So how does he deal with that? It's yeah. so loyal yeah. to the comics. Yeah. And, and, and that's such a good point. One of the things I wrote down as I was watching the movie is that this movie feels like a very fresh superhero movie mm-hmm. in that it really returns to the form of it explores in depth what it means to be a superhero and the nuances and the difficult choices that come with being a superhero. And it's a, per- you said it was dark, but I thought it had a nice balance of lightheartedness, a well, lot of sure heart as well. Definitely dark because some dire things happen in here. We cannot even begin to scratch the surface of the uh, excitement uh, uh. that one feels when watching this movie. Oh, and I yeah. just want to make a point here without giving any spoilers you're in for surprises you know sure um, for sure and so th- that really augments my rating because even though I was finding flaws here and there with the story t- at the end of the day all of the rewards that you get from watching this movie kind of you know overshadows any flaws for me right really. and, and that and that's what happens when you tap into nostalgia tremendously everything kind of goes out the window kind of like with Ghostbusters Afterlife, you know, when we did that review, I was like, you know, I had issues with the storyline, but screw it, the nostalgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I would say that this is my most enjoyable movie of 2021. Uh, I know I talked a lot about West Side Story being the well, uh, the best well-made movie. Um, However, asterisk i haven't seen the matrix resurrections because it doesn't come out till next week so so that we'll may see. change it I, could i don't I, know i do want to add it but i do want to add really quick that i also thoroughly enjoyed how every character has a moment to shine in this movie great observation every character is given a platform to really stand out i love the camaraderie between peter parker uh, mj and ned ned, ned. Mm-hmm. um and there's a really nice emotionally packed moment at the end of the movie with Zendaya and and Peter Parker and the, the way that they both work with each other it builds amazing chemistry and I really enjoy that. The last thing I want to add guys before we go to our, our real ratings and whatnot is a did you know thing. Ba-da-boom. Oh, Did okay. you know that this okay. movie take some aspects of a couple storylines from the comics. Uh, one being One More Day, where he asks you know, uh, Doctor Strange to you know, I want everyone to forget about me because it's causing issues, right? Then it also takes aspects of a storyline called One Moment in Time, which I won't go into, but if you guys are interested in some of the source material, go read those. This is not adapted fully, it just takes aspects of that. So, there's your did you know. Did you know facts. Awesome. Oh. Okay. Okay, all right. We all know it's five reels, but let me tell you, let me give you guys some context here. And I do apologize, Mr. Lenny's about to be a little long winded. So, you know, when I watched this movie, I had very low expectations because I was like, eh, it's just another Spider Man movie. But I had stayed away from a lot of social media content, and so this kind of blew me out the water. Uh, it's no surprise on Rotten Tomatoes, it's got a 95 critic score, 99 audience score as of this recording. You had mentioned on IMDb, it has a 9.2 out of 10 score. Which is very high for IMDb. Super rare, yeah. right? Yes, very rare. Yeah, you know, uh, there were a couple times where I yelled in the theater. Yeah, I, I and the audience members did too. Yeah. Yeah, they were going yeah. crazy. You know, they were laughing, they were gasping, even people crying during these like silent moments. I was like, holy moly. I haven't felt a certain feeling for a movie like this since I watched Avengers in 2012 for the first time. Um, I'm not saying it's my favorite movie since then. I'm just saying there's a special feeling in there that you get. And when you watch it, you'll understand what I'm saying. Very nostalgic, right? Yeah. This really turns the page. I'm, I grew up collecting comic books religiously, so you see a lot of parallels to the comics in that you know this really turns the page for Peter Parker into becoming like a coming of age Spider Man, while also you know going back to the roots as to like what really makes him Peter Parker. You know, I'm not going to go into the details, but. Um, 
that's basically it, guys. Uh, I, I was I was blown away, blown away with this movie, and so that is why I'm giving it a solid, solid five reels out of five. It's going to be one of my top five MCU movies of all time. Wow. Okay. Well, I haven't. I I, I need some more time to really let that simmer <laughs> and think about it. Um, I did love the movie. I highly recommend it. Highly think that should be seen on the big screen without a doubt. I'm gonna give this movie two different ratings. As a Marvel movie, as a superhero movie, and as a Spider-Man movie, it definitely is deserving of five reels. If you look at this as a movie, though, in general, I would knock it down to 4.5 because of the flaws in the plot that I had mentioned being overstuffed. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you. I just want to point out that it's not a perfect movie. It's nearly perfect, though, and will satisfy fans of Marvel and Spider-Man immensely. And I'll leave you with that. Yeah. Uh, hey, look, if I'm being objective, if I'm being objective, <laughs> just, there was some, some to there's qualify. Some, there are some story isms that were like, I called BS on that, you know, come on. Yeah. And then, um, one, one technical thing that they could have done better was do better with the cinematography. You know, there, there were a lot of moments for some dramatic cinematography and I felt like they missed a lot of that. Hmm. So okay. if I'm being picky. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, that concludes our review guys we would love to hear your thoughts on no way home definitely leave an insightful comment down below the first person to leave an insightful comment will win one of our brand new Spider-Verse Night Fever mashup shirts. Woo, super we hot. mashed up Spider-Man with Saturday Night Fever for a very funny parody. And also check out our other apparel and accessories with an abundance of movie mashup designs at realscreeners.com. And also check us out on social media, guys, on Facebook and TikTok. We're at Real Screeners. Instagram, we're at real.screeners, guys. And as always, please subscribe to our channel. We put a lot of work into this and we would love to have more of you guys see this stuff, our content. Hit that bell button so that you know every time we upload a video and lastly smash that like button on your way out yes. thank you very much yes 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 and stay tuned next time for our real take on the matrix Woo! resurrections <laughs>